President Muhammad Buhari begs Nigerians for forgiveness as his eight-year tenure comes to an end. And Nigerians lament as tout take over Lagos State. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. At an occasion to mark his final outing as president on a Saturday, before handing over, President Mohamed Buhari thanked Nigerians for the honor to serve for two terms, 2015 to 2023. He's asking for pardon from those he might have hurt while discharging his duties. With less than 37 days left in office, the president recounted his leadership roles in the country for more than 40 years, serving variously as a military officer, a military governor, a minister, and head of state, and returning as a democratically elected president in 2015. Recall that the president lauded his efforts, reiterating that he has done his best in the last seven and a half years, noting that Nigeria is a big country confronted with numerous challenges. Joining us to discuss this tonight, and of course, the president's strides is Babashala Debui. He's a political analyst, and Choma Ezenwafo. She is the head of news, Cool Wazobia Info in Port Hacker. Thank you so much, lady and gentlemen, for joining us. All right, thank you. I, I, Choma, we're going to start with you until we're able to get Babashala to join us. Let's start by looking at um, the president's comments over. Um, Salah. Now, he obviously um, had given himself a pat on the back, and this is not the first time the president has done that. Um, he's been quoted severally to say that, oh, he has done his best for Nigerians. He has kept his promises, um, and he had delivered on all of them. But you are obviously a broadcast journalist. You are covering these stories every now and again, every single day. And you would obviously know if the president has, um, you know, kept his promises. But surf on the surface... Um, how well has the president done so far? Okay. Now, when you look at um, good governance, I mean, democracy, we're, we're not the first country to practice democracy, Mary, and we've, we have the United States that most democracies are modeled to us. And so when you look at the tenets of democracy, or what we call the dividends of democracy, and the fact that they are still absent in Nigeria, uh, the leadership will be held responsible. And if the leadership will be held responsible, that simply means that the current leadership has not done well. And when you look at it that way, it's devoid of the sentiment that is being shared by whatever divide that exists in Nigeria. Of course, you know, we're just out of the last elections and there's been uh, some, uh, you know, lots of arguments, debates, so many, uh, I mean, we've become even more polarized than we, even when we got into the elections. And so it's important at this time that we look at things based on facts. When you look at uh, one of the basic dividends of democracy being good governance, we do not have good governance at any level of government in Nigeria. And so who will be held responsible? It is the president that will be held responsible. And so when you're looking at it that way, no, the president has not done well. The current administration has not done well. We've not gone from one to two or two to three or three to four or four to five or five to six. No, we, we haven't made progress economically. We haven't made progress at any at, at any sphere or whatever index. The country, so, so much has been left for, for Nigeria to desire. And um, it, it just continues, uh, actually, Miriam. Uh, let's talk about some of the you know, promises that the president had made back in the day. In fact, um, I remember that um, back in the day, the president talked about three things. In fact, they rode into power on three major key issues. Um, they did talk about um, putting an end to Boko Haram, um, ending terrorism. Mm. The president talked about fighting corruption so that his government is going to have zero tolerance uh, for corruption. He also talked about uh, dealing with unemployment and underemployment. Let's start with um, the issue of Boko Haram. Now, many would tell you that the Boko Haram situation has been pushed to the fringes and you barely have the issue of Boko Haram. But then, of course, we have had a, a hydro-headed monster, which is the issue of kidnapping, um, banditry, and, of course, um, 
these things have metamorphosed into different kinds of, uh, you know, terrorist activities that have plagued us on every side. And it's not just, uh, you know, not, not just in the north. It's spread to the Middle Belt and several other places. As we speak right now, Burnway State is still dealing with the issue of cattle rustlers and, of course, um, militancy. And, and that's also one of the pointers as well. Before, one of the promises the current administration made was within the tackle Boko Haram. And like you said, it's evolved since then and spread into other states. At some point, there were concerns that it was going to get down to the south and not just the north. Within the eight years of this administration, in most states, saw killings like it's never been recorded in the south since the Biafran War and was mentioned. And uh, a lot of that has still gone unexplained. No one has been held responsible. No one has been indicted, prosecuted, or even arrested uh, before we talk about prosecution. So yes, we, we, we cannot say that the war against um, terrorism or kidnapping or the key criminalities that we saw in the build up to the inception of this administration, we have not seen that tackle. And uh, while the government, the current government, is okay for these handlers to, you know, look at it the way they would look at it as these handlers, when you look at it from what it is, do Nigerians feel safe? That question remains a big no. Do Nigerians do not feel safe, and it remains an issue to be tackled even for the incoming government. Babashala, let me come to you. Let's talk about fuel subsidy here. Um, uh, one of the people who were the frontliners for Occupy Nigeria, obviously, is President Buhari. We also had several others who make up his government today as some of those who supported the Occupy Nigeria situation. And we all know what it was, fuel subsidy. Um, they protested against the then gov uh, president, uh, Goodluck Jonathan, in 2012. Um, they, they protested against the issue of fuel subsidy, which would have pushed, you know, the price of fuel from 65 naira to 141 naira per litre. Now, those demonstrations, as we all remember, was across the Federation. Uh, and, and then when the president came into power, he promised to reduce premium motor spirit, that's PMS, um, to 40 naira per litre. But he took Nigerians by surprise by increasing it uh, to 145 naira in 2015. Um, recently, he just announced the removal of fuel subsidy that um, he protested against in 2012. Uh, and presently, fuel is sold at about 162 naira. And of course, as we also know, the price changes wherever you go. Um, how well can we say that this Buhari administration has done in terms of fuel subsidy? And, and not to forget the issue of our petroleum products being stolen on a daily basis. And the NNPC, as at 2022, had remitted zero into the nation's coffers. What are your thoughts? Yeah, thank you once again for inviting me for political analysis today. Um, I, based on your question, I think it's one of the reasons why our president is tendering apology to some Nigerians. Because according to his story, he said, I now have fought some Nigerians. When the truth is, the man has not fought some Nigerians. He has actually fought majority, most of us in the country, because he totally failed in the... Uh, delivering its promises uh, based on the reasons we voted him in as the president of Nigeria in 2015. On the first subsidy you talked about, I remember how we started talking about how uh, they started the NNPC, built for refineries when it was the military government, when he headed uh, the country, the country, how they were able to do this and that. He made me a lot of promises that subsidy is not real, it's a crime. We are going to reduce the fuel price to uh, 40 something naira. At the end of the day, we can all see what the price is now. I'm very sure the price now is not regulated because I, I, I believe the police stations are the ones now fixing the price. Now, we cannot deceive ourselves. If truly the government is actually subsidizing the fuel and is actually gulping trillions of naira that subsidy has to stop in a day, whether we like it or not. Three laws of Naira is a huge amount of money that can turn over, transform the country if judiciously used uh, 
for the country, for the development of the country and develop the economy good. If judicially or the judiciously used, or if not, um, we are still going to come back to the square one. We need to look at how society started, actually. The society started on Kerosene, not on Fuel. Um, the, I remember that was under the government of President Yahadwa. He started on Kerosene by selling Kerosene for 15 naira, and some uh, powerful Nigerians felt that, oh, my minority cannot be enjoying the first subsidy, why only on kerosene? Let us take it out of kerosene. Let every one of us be uh, benefiting from the su subsidy. So whether the subsidy is real or not, the truth is, I can tell you that we are not feeling it. Because one thing I've come to realize is that any time they announce the removal of subsidy, they are telling you invariably that they want to increase the web pump price. That's exactly what they are telling you. And immediately they said that, prices of goods in Nigeria will start to rise. So the government of Buhari has totally failed in this aspect of foreign subsidy. The, the government has, because I remember how they promised a licensing private in the, uh, individual uh, panelists in the country. Up to now, we are only hearing of Dangote, which of course, that has not even started. And we also, we also learned of all these uh, modular uh, refineries. Up to now, we don't know of anyone. So what has actually happened under the government of uh, Buhari in the last eight years that the man mm -hmm. has governed this country that we cannot even be bold enough to say this is what this government has achieved in this particular sector, apart from changing the names of the, uh, uh, of, of the petroleum uh, uh, parasitas. Mm -hmm. Apart from those ones, I don't know of anything that the government, the, 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 the masses of Nigeria have not actually enjoyed this government in respect of the, uh, the, 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 the oil sector. And that is just the truth. But Bashala, I'm, I'm curious. I'm, cu I'm, so, I'm so sorry to talk over you, but let me just come in there. Uh, you're, you're talking about, of course, we all, we're all aware of, if not many of us, are aware of the situation in the oil uh, sector of this country, which supposedly is our mainstay. Um, and the fact that Zero Naira was, you know, accrued into the coffers of the federal government as at 2022, and we're in 2023, and nothing has been said about it. Um, the allegations that um, thousands of thousands of barrels are stolen, and they make their way out of this country every single day. Of course, the army also found, um, uh, by magic, of course, um, you know, a, a particular. Let's say they found a shipment that was taking our oil out. But I'm, I'm wondering, how many of us as Nigerians have asked questions as to who's supposed to be held responsible? Why are heads not rolling? Why is the NNPC quiet about this? Why is Mr. President, who is the number one person in charge of the petroleum sector, not telling us anything? And why are we quiet? Why are we not asking questions? Because you see, you're telling us the obvious. But why are we not pushing? And the government is about to hand over come May 29, and we still are not able to find out what's happened. The National Assembly recently called um, the um, Attorney General and the Finance Minister to come and give a count of $200 million, uh, still in the oil and gas sector that's not been accounted for. And we are still mum, and I'm wondering why. Well, uh, unfortunately, the, the president of Nigeria also double has the Minister of Petroleum. So, and the, the Minister of State is just like a deputy to the Minister of Petroleum. So, the, unfortunately, the man that's supposed to provide the answer to this question will tell you he does not know anything, because that is him. For me, I, I need to let us understand some of things in respect of this, uh, of the transformation that they had last year in changing of name, in production of different things. I need to let us know that NNPC now is now a more or less like a commercial organization. It is no longer, it is left in the court, no longer in control of the government. It will now be run as if we are running an individual organization. So what that means is this. NNPC has no obligation to be remitting to the federal government again. The only thing that is expected of NNPC to be doing now is to be uh, uh, giving the government its own shares based on the 10%. Like, I, I think the 10%, okay, the federal government still had 90% and 10% to want some individuals. Now, and another thing is that what government is expected of NNPC now is to pay its tax and some other duties 
or uh, fines or whatever they are they are obligated to do. So they are not under obligation again to remit. Maybe that is one of the reasons why they will tell you that they did not remit anything to the government last year. But the truth is, according to the uh, company Petroleum Income Tax Law, that is Petroleum Import Tax Law, uh, this year they will now have that obligation to make a payment of taxes because you have the window of six months. From just for last ten now, it's going to be from January one to June twenty. That is expected of NNTC to pay taxes into the go government uh, coffers. If that is not done, then the NNPC managing director or the group managing director should be held responsible for that. Okay. That's number one. number two. What has happened to all the money that has been remitted to the government before the transformation into a limited company? What has happened? What has happened to all the revenue that the government has generated between 2015 and 2022? What has happened to them? Has anybody given account of what the government has been able to do, do with those money, with the funds, with the revenue, not only from the oil sector, from all sectors? But who's asking? Are, are we, who's the asking? masses, actually benefiting? From the revenue that has been uh, that has been generated, that the, that the government have claimed, including the loans that have been obtained from foreign institutions, can we actually feel it? He says the inflation of the country is growing, growing. I think it's 22 percent now, growing every day, and everybody is shouting. We cannot call ourselves Nigerians and we will say, "Oh, Nigeria is a very good, is a very rich country, is a wealthy country." Whereas those of us that are Nigerians, that are representing Nigerians, is not reflecting on us. Okay. So for NM, for government to claim zero. I believe it's as a result of limited company that the uh, NFC was transformed to into last year. Let's see what will happen between January this year and June 30 this year. Okay. Uh, Chama, let me come back to you. Let's talk about the economy. Now, we all know that under the former president, good luck, Jonathan, Nigeria's economy was um, the largest and the fastest growing on the continent. Um, but um, President Buhari pledged at the time that uh, he was going to establish a market-based economy. Um, Buhari also told us that that economy uh, would run with a clear, definite regulatory framework and effective enforcement mechanism. It took the president six months, if we all remember, to pick his... Um, uh, cabinet at Minister, the time. Cabinet, yes. Yeah. And um, he, he also promised us that um, this economy was going to be particip participatory and Nigerians were going to benefit from that sector. As we mm. speak, more and more Nigerians are running away from here because, of course, most of them who own businesses have shut down and decided to seek greener pastures elsewhere. Um, what mm. do you think has been the major blow to the Nigerian um, economy? I mean, outside of COVID, which has affected every other country across the world. Mm -hmm. uh, no, don't forget, Mary, and before the COVID, we suffered two recessions. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me. We suffered two recessions. And in those recessions, we had to make certain decisions that obviously affected the economy. Mm -hmm. And so recovering from COVID was like we already had a blow we're dealing with as a nation. And then recovering from that and then having the Naira policy, having to deal with the Naira policy, uh, wasn't there was no time the economy had to have any sort of breathe out of some sort. There's always there's always been something for us to deal with. And don't forget when you fit it into the global uh, inflation that the country also had to deal with, then you obviously see that we we never had it good in the past eight years. I mean, it's been a very difficult time for Nigerians, and there's usually no support. I mean, at the time that you hear in other countries that people were getting some sort of government support. You usually would not hear here of any such in Nigeria. Of any, any okay, yeah, there were programs that were mentioned. And the question remains, who are the people that have benefited from those programs? Of all the numerous programs, even the one rolled out by CBN themselves, we still cannot say that, oh, these are, these are the people that benefited from them. Till today, we still have it's still a story to be done for journalists to actually track the people that have benefited from any form of scheme or programs of the federal government, any form of poverty alleviation program. Because, I mean, the last time I checked, Nigeria is still regarded as the world's poverty capital. We do not position, we do not spend 
I mean, our government did not spend like we are the world's property capital. You still see uh, monies pushed into, I mean, projects you thought would not be prioritized uh, for a country like Nigeria. So yeah, we, our, our economy was always staggering. And then the COVID-19 that hit every other person came and left us with nothing. And the economic recovery pathway that was supposed to be created, we're not very sure how many people followed that pathway. We're not very sure how much. Oh, yeah, maybe aviation sector got some sort of relief or some sort of support from the government. But that's just basically it. We forget that the informal sector is some sort of the backbone of our economy. Mm. We are not aware of any tangible tangible, I say, Mary, and any tangible measures that were put out to support the informal sector, who, as a backbone, obviously, also took the biggest hit of what happened to our economy. And then came the Naira policy that, um, man, yeah, it's good that, I don't know, I, the last time I checked, someone said, oh, the, the, the Naira thing, crash, the, crash, the cash crunch is gone and done. But then is it? Because by the time December comes, when has this been new note? I've asked that question. I'm not sure a lot of people are still citing the new notes. We still have a lot of people dealing with old notes. What's being done exactly to ensure that by December 31st, all of this, we do not go back to where we found ourselves uh, just before the election started. So, yeah, our economy is still in a very bad shape, and we do not see, we just see borrowings, and uh, it's... I mean, literally, you're, play, you're playing into my next question because I was going to go there. But before I go there, um, mm. under the Jonathan administration, and I think under the Obasanjo administration, we know that every um, economic council is um, you know, presided over by the vice president of the country. Um, and under the mm. good luck Jonathan administration, we did see um, you know, an, an, uh, an economic recovery plan, a policy, a strategy, a strategy that you know, was clearly put out to you know, help the economy. And like I said in my opening, uh, about the sector, um, we saw a boost under the administration. There are many who would also argue that uh, there was an oil boost uh, uh, under the Jonathan administration. And then there are those who would also argue that we also had some uh, under the Buhari administration, but what did we make of it? Again, the Economic Council mm. under the Buhari administration, what has been their policy framework? What has been their thrust, their main thrust? Many have also queried the CBN governor mm. Uh, for usurping some of the responsibilities and duties of not just the, um, you know, the agricultural sector, but even the finance sector, mm -hmm. making there be a blur in some of the lines as to their responsibility. And maybe that could have been, um, I, and I'm asking, could that also have played a role in how uh, directionless our economy and the strategy, uh, strategy that we have implored, um, you know, to deal with it? Yeah, absolutely. The roles, what happened before the election, because a lot of it, was hinged on, it was like a political move for a lot of people. They saw it as a political move, considering the timing. A lot of that would have been left after the elections. But then again, it was part of what was said to be uh, plans to deal with um, vote buying. Whether I start vote buying is a conversation for another day. But yes, the CBN governor's role in where we are today cannot be uh, overlooked. The CBN's governor, the CBN governor, I mean, so many, we've spoken to so many experts who have criticized his actions and the way he's acted, not just him, the Attorney General of Federation as well. These two of, uh, government officials have, have left many wondering whether uh, the president is still the president or if they are the one now running the country. So yes, we've had, we've had them take actions that, I mean, even to the extent of ignoring Supreme Court directives and Supreme Court judgments and Supreme Court orders. That alone wasn't a good one for Nigeria, where we say that we, for an administration that um, that, that say that uh, rule of law, they are very particular about upholding the rule of law, that really was a dent for this administration as well. And not just that one, even before that, we do not see the administration uh, following these Supreme Court uh, judgments when they come out, they are basically ignored. And so seeing it play out when it comes to the decisions that were taken around the economy of the nation didn't also go so well for this administration. Mm. Um, but Mashallah, let me come back to you. Let's talk about one of the things, again, that this, the Buhari administration uh, harped upon that they were going to put an end to. Uh, medical trips abroad. But that seemed to have been the order of the day under this administration. And many who were keeping count um, uh, had 
complained about Mr. President's medical trips abroad. And that's one of also the questions that many are asking about the incoming government, if it's going to continue, um, you know, with the use of taxpayers' monies to treat our presidents all abroad. Papa Shala, can you hear me? Well, um, before, before, uh, before, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Please? Yes, go ahead, please. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. I, I remember very well before the 2015 uh, swearing in of the president government, um, the, the, pre the uh, president elect then actually made mention of how to put an end to uh, med that medical tourism abroad. And unfortunately, he happened to be the first person to bring that particular uh, promise. So we have seen a lot of things happening in the health sector where even, the, even we discover that every year there's always a budget to the actual clinic and at the end of the day, not common paracetamol or uh, injection is found in the actual clinic. We find a situation whereby the medical doctors have been on strike or net for different reasons, as a, uh, including welfare, including getting modern tools to help the health sector. And as the government commits to deliver all those, and at the end of the day, we discover that they are just promises and nothing is being done. Mm -hmm. Most of our government uh, officials travel abroad for medical because they know that they have killed the medical sector in Nigeria. Of a recent day, the, 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 in the National Assembly, they are announcing that uh, before any medical student travels out of the country, it must have spent uh, five years. I think that's the deal five years after obtaining license. They are telling you, what in, in what they are saying is this. We run away from you, Nigeria. I want to go and meet you again abroad. God forbid, that will not happen. That is exactly what the message they are passing across. The government has totally failed in the health sector. As long as we do not have a single medical center in Nigeria that belongs to the government, for the government, that is that we can say is a specialist hospital for a particular uh, ailment or sickness. We don't. We it is totally below the World Health Organization benchmark. We are not there anywhere at all. The government officials, we know the number of if they are to calculate the number of years that the president preceded uh, on the, uh, abroad, going to abroad on the medical 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 attention. We are we, out of the eight years. We can say the government, has, uh, the president, has gone for about two or three years. We have to accumulate everything. This government has no interest in anything. The only thing I can say about this government, we want to occupy, and we must ensure that we rule for eight years. And this they have done, and that is why all sector, all the sectors in Nigeria, in this particular government, I cannot pinpoint to any one that has improved. Not a single one. It's not only the health sector. Every sector in this country totally failed under the president of President um, Mohamed Bouhari. Mm. And uh, finally, guys, because we're out of time, in, in, in one sentence each, um, how, how, how deserving of um, our forgiveness is Mr. President? And what will history remember him for? Choma. Well, for me, posterity will remember Go ahead, go ahead, Baba Shalaj. Go ahead. Go ahead. He, okay, the posterity will always remember for this. So that's just the truth there. We we'll always remember that during the government of President Buhari, as you remember Jim during the, when he was the head of state as the military general then, uh, then we, all, we are going to remember again that the worst president in Nigeria since 1999 is government of President Mohamed Buhari because okay. nothing under his government can say, we can say, actually right. uh, turn positive. Okay. It's always going down. We can see the difference. I, I, said, a se I said a sentence. Uh, I said a sentence, IT. Baba Shala. I said a sentence. Choma, quickly, we have to go. Okay. Choma, are you still there? Oh, I think that we lost Choma. But well, I want to say thank you. Baba Shala Degui is a political analyst, and Choma Zenwafo is the head of news. Uh, cool was over here in Fort Port Hacker. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. All right.
Well, uh, up next, we turn our attention to the menace of touts and thugs in Lagos State and how the Goshen's are crying out for help. Stay with us, we'll be right back.